live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. And we're back here with theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2016. We're the worldwide leader in live enterprise tech coverage. Happy to welcome from Quali, I've got Lior uh, Koryat, who's the CEO, and Shashi Kirin, who's the CMO. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. All right, so you know, some, some of us have been calling this you know, the Super Bowl of, of kind of the whole technology industry. Uh, Lior, it's the first time we've had Quali on the yep. program. You know, share with our audience a little bit about you know, what, what, what's Quali's mission and how you fit in the whole AWS picture. So Quali, since the beginning, was all about automating infrastructure. And um, in the past few years, we have added that to support an entire full-blown cloud approach. Uh, today our vision is to automate hybrid clouds and offer a sandbox as a service on top of hybrid clouds uh, for the uh, DevOps lifecycle. And all right, Shashi, we've actually had you on the program in, in, in a previous role, so uh, as the CMO, tell us, you know, where, where, where does Quali kind of, you know, make its name, what are they known for, what, what, what brings customers to them? So, um, if you look at some of the major transitions happening in the industry today, they, are, they have to do with the modernizing of applications, you know, you're having enterprise customers shift from monolithic to microservices and containers, you're having uh, the move to public and hybrid clouds when you have an on-premise workload that's going there. Or you may have somebody doing digitization. So with any of these transitions, you see there is the old and there is the new. And so when you want to move from the old to the new, how do you make that move faster? How do you de-risk that move? And how do you do it at a lower cost? So that's really where Quali fits in because we have the notion of a sandbox that acts as a bridge between the old and the new and helps customers replicate those environments um, of the legacy on one hand, the new on the other hand, see what their application experience is like, uh, standardize those environments and expose that to developers and testers. And uh, it's, it's a very innovative way of taking these complex environments, standardizing that, making it DevOps friendly, and in the process, you know, you end up uh, making the transition happen a lot more seamlessly. So that's the whole notion of cloud sandboxes. And uh, here at AWS reInvent, for example, uh, we are talking about hybrid sandboxes. Today, one of the biggest transitions that's happening in the IT industry with almost 70% of the enterprises is the move to hybrid clouds. Uh, VMware, for example, announced after a long time a partnership with AWS. So for a VMware customer who is looking to move to AWS or wanting to um, uh, look at a multi-cloud strategy, how do you make that happen? So that's really uh, the sweet spot where we are positioning Poly's uh, cloud sandboxes and um, today we have a lot of customers from cloud providers, service providers, technology vendors to enterprise and the uh, use cases uh, also become quite varied. Yeah, Shashi, it's definitely you know one of the things we've been looking at at the show this week uh, that that whole kind of maturation uh, of of hybrid uh, you know before it was uh, you know as Andy Jassy said oh people saw we 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 got it a little bit wrong you, you you listened to us wrong you know we were like oh there's only one cloud and that's there we're we're giving you choices I was like well I heard two main choices from hybrid they're like well I can put VMware on AWS next year, or you know, we could take this wonderful serverless Lambda stuff, which is really cool, and everybody's excited about, and put that on the edge. That doesn't hit a, the, the vast majority of hybrid cases that, that I hear, but I'm, I'm curious, you, you know, what do you target for the you know, hybrid sandbox, and what do you hear from customers when they say hybrid, what does that mean? Yeah, so it's actually a very um, evolving terminology. Um, there is hybrid and there is the multi-cloud as well, and I'll talk a little bit about both. So uh, we've had enterprise customers, uh, whether it be you know, bleeding edge banks and financial institutions or somebody who's more looking to adopt best practices um, and a mid-tier enterprise, they all start to say, look, uh, maybe I take this workload and use it for dev test in a certain uh, public cloud. Or they say, look, I want to do some bursting for capacity augmentation. And when they go down this path of uh, an on-premise, and on-premise could be OpenStack, it could be VMware, it could be bare metal, it doesn't matter, right? And you are moving into a public cloud environment like AWS, the cloud formation templates. 
in many cases, the application needs to be re-architected. And then you have uh, the security posture, which may actually change as well. Um, so the stack itself changes as you move to infrastructure as a service. And typically, they end up um, you know, budgeting a six month or eight one month window for this transition. And as they progress along, they realize uh, that it's much more complicated than it actually uh, was originally thought to be. And they start hitting these speed bumps. Um, and Part of the challenge is, you know, it's hard to predict how exactly the application is going to behave in a new environment altogether. And that's really the challenge that we're trying to solve because if you can replicate that environment, make it available earlier during the dev test stage, you're more liable to catch things sooner uh, than later. And as a result, the quality of your release improves. You also tend to move much faster. And so it de-risks that move. So that's, uh, that's really um, you know, the value proposition where we are encouraging customers to first think inside the sandbox. Um, and that's uh, resonating. So, so Lior, uh, you know, there, there's certain companies here that were kind of born, uh, you know, for for the cloud. Uh, you know, your company's actually uh, kind of started around the time that you know maybe we were talking about what cloud is. But I have to imagine a lot of your stuff wasn't on AWS. Can you walk us through a little bit of the journey? You know, your business, what what kind of the, the rise of public clouds meant for it, and what 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 customers have been you know helping you drive that. It's a very good question, and I think it's a very good differentiator for Quali um, also. Because when we started about seven to 10 years ago, the cloud was only maybe a concept that a few had spoken about. And it was mainly around the infrastructure that was on-prem, and mainly also bare metal as infrastructure. So our actually heritage, or our roots, came from automating infrastructure, mainly bare metal, then later on adding virtualization as a technology to the mix, enabling what today you would consider to be a cloud, but was remote access to that infrastructure and automate that for stakeholders along the life cycle of, uh, again, developers, testers, all the way to release and deployment of applications. Um, but as the market evolved, we've added, obviously, the support for uh, the public clouds as well. And what we see today is the challenge for a lot of our customers is how do they mix all the physical or the investment that they have in those private clouds Naturally, they shrinking, they consolidate, and they want to add uh, public cloud as well, and they need to migrate, but they also need to merge that and need to make sure that all their workloads are working across those. So what we bring as quality, we bring a lot of IP and a lot of capability around the bare metal, the uh, virtual infrastructure, and then the same approach on top of the public one. And the main, this is one big differentiator. The other would be that the concept or our approach to users is basically very much targeted towards today the stakeholders of DevOps. The users themselves that need to get access to that in a self-service manner without any hindrance or limitation or delay in getting those resources, the infrastructure itself and mapping onto that the applications and services. So we are quite unique also in the approach that we offer. So or my understanding, you guys are really be a multi-cloud, cloud agnostic. I'm curious what it's like partnering with Amazon. There, there was a quote in, in one of the, uh, you know, an interview that Andy Jassy did that came out this week that kind of, you know, the headline was a little bit inflammatory, but it was like, we're going to give preference and kind of put resources towards those that are, you know, doing us and not other things. What do, you, what do you think when you hear that? What's it like partnering with Amazon? What's that mean for your business? So we very much love the fact that there is a public cloud out there and we, and we see a lot of customers that would like to embrace that. Reality, however, is a little bit different, uh, right? Mainly with big enterprises that uh, comprise most of our account base. So their reality is a little bit different, but with many new ones that we uh, reach out to as potential customers and prospects, we do see those that maybe a specific group or an entire account that truly want to be pure cloud um, consumer. Um, even for them, we bring a lot of value with our uh, sandbox capabilities or concept in a sense that we allow you to encapsulate, if you will, an Uber container of the entire environment that you need to spin up from the applications and services that you model all the way to the data that you need to capture, the test and development or monitoring tools for production. Define all that in an environment, in a blueprint, then consume it on the go. And they use the the term that we use as sandbox might be a little bit misleading because you might think it's only applicable for pre-production, but actually that blueprint is handed over then for production for uh, being deployed uh, there as well. So um, 
Uh, we see reality to be, at least for the next few years, that hybrid cloud is there, but uh, we love the fact that public cloud is available and accelerates development and access to a lot of our customers. All right, uh, Shashi, I want to give you a kind of a closing remarks. Uh, I, I'm sure people come by your booth, they get to see the, the hybrid sandbox. Well, bring us in some of the conversations we're having with uh, customers, key takeaways for the show for you. Yeah, so today if you look at it, you know, the industry is at a nexus of cloud and DevOps centric tools. And they are looking for, you know, standardized ways in which they can automate the life cycle um, at the next, uh, bringing DevOps and cloud uh, practices together. Um, just sort of piggybacking on your last question, you know, we're seeing many of our customers um, at a crossroads. On one hand, you know, they are evolving their traditional data centers to private clouds. There are some that are fitting into that category. There are others who are a bit further evolved having private clouds uh, and they're looking at a hybrid deployment and they may choose to you know, go down the path of AWS but there are some that are looking at these workloads and saying where, which public cloud would I get the best application experience from and somebody else may choose another public cloud based on the application that their uh, application experience that they want to get. And so, um, over the next few years, I think we will see um, a lot of these plays get um, you know, played out in that sense. And uh, it's, it's about giving that choice of saying, look, for your application, for your infrastructure, um, what is the path that you want to take, and can you offer that experience in a seamless way uh, and give you the choice uh, of this private mm -hmm. cloud, this public cloud, any infrastructure vendor. So we are not getting predicated to any certain uh, path. Our goal is to say, look, you choose whatever environment you want and we will help you sort of replicate that, model any infrastructure that you choose, orchestrate that and deploy it across any cloud, right? So that is actually um, making sure they don't get locked in into any decision and it gives them the flexibility to maneuver. And so that's uh, really what's resonating and where we intend to continue to double click and move the ball forward. All right, Leroy, I just want to give you the final word. So you're talking to executives, you know, CIOs, you know, kind of the board level discussions. You know, what, what's that important par imperative that you're talking about them today? So like Shashi mentioned, I think choice is one of the big uh, things that we would like to offer them. Uh, the other is productivity and increased productivity without giving away any of the authority or the um, aspects of security that you would like to have. And um, we mainly talk about that and the values associated with it. So if it is about choice, it translates to saving a lot of money around the infrastructure, right? Um, and to utilize what you already have, to retire what you do not need, and then to burst into whatever cloud of choice you would like to have. Do that at the same time without losing any of the uh, control that you have on the teams, but and do this in full authority, but allow them the productivity that they need and the self-service uh, and access that they need. We see those to be key to a lot of the uh, CIOs and the CEOs that we talk to that would like to um, modernize their applications, meet um, the timelines, that the shorter time to market that they need to meet, um, and save a lot of the money on infrastructure. All right, well, we've hit five o'clock. Uh, there's still lots more interviews we've got to do. Uh, lots of the attendees here, if you see behind us, uh, starting to pour the beers and check out uh, you know, all the activities. But stay with us for lots more coverage here of AWS reInvent 2016. You're watching.